Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Foreclosure Fix Podcast. My name is DJ Alojo, and our goal is to help 1 million homeowners successfully navigate foreclosure. Now, if this mission resonates with you, please do us a favor, like, subscribe, and share the message that we are here to help. We have been getting great traction on the podcast, and it's all because of your reviews, your likes, and sharing this message of hope to those who may be in some financial distress. Now, on previous podcasts, you've heard us talk to loan servicers and attorneys about a loss mitigation package. And in today's podcast, we want to dive deep into what a loss mitigation package is, how to fill one out, and the things that you should be prepared to do when going through that process. So high level, a loss mitigation package is basically what a loan servicer is going to ask you to complete when you contact them to let them know that you are having difficulty paying your mortgage or you're going to have difficulty paying your mortgage. The goal of the loan servicer is to collect information to know the best way to be able to help you. Is the best plan going to be a loan modification? Is the best plan going to be a forbearance? Or do you need to take more drastic steps? And so the loan modification document and the loss mitigation document is basically a question sheet that you have to fill out with a lot of different information. And I just want to give you some background and some context that if you are about to fill out this document, it can be pretty arduous. They're going to request a lot of things and it's going to take some time. It's almost similar to applying for a new loan because the goal of the lender and the goal of the servicer is to make sure you can afford whatever modification they put you in or just to make sure you can afford the loan in general based off your current living conditions and your current financial situation. So diving into what the document is, right? What is a loss mitigation package, right? The loss mitigation package typically is comprised of a few different sections. One, they're going to ask some general questions about you, about your situation and things like that. Next, they want to know property specific questions. They want to know all about the details of the property, the size, the condition, if there are any defects and things like that. Then they want to ask you for authorizations, right? Because they're going to verify the information you're telling them. So they're going to ask you for third party authorizations. The next thing is that they want to understand the hardship you went through that caused you to now not be in a situation where you can pay your mortgage on time. The next thing they want to budget. So they want to see how you're spending your money. And the last thing is a financial statement. So they want to understand not only how you're spending your money, but do you have sources for additional income? And so let's dive into each of those areas into, in more detail. The first thing is on the general questions, right? They want to know, is that property your primary residence or is it a rental property? You know, loan servicers treat rental property versus primary residences different. And so you have to really understand that if it's a rental property and you're not making the payments, then they may not be as favorable in doing a modification or doing a forbearance. Right. But if it's your primary residence, you probably have a greater likelihood that they will work with you to help you resolve that issue. Then they want to know how many people live in the house. Right. How many people live in the property? Are there two working adults, three working adults? Who else can contribute to the mortgage payment where everybody's living? Are there minors in the house, right? So they want to understand the makeup and the family structure inside the property. The next thing is that they want to know how much you can bring to the table in the near future. So in the next 30, 60, 90 days, how much can you bring to the table? So say, for example, you're behind on your mortgage $10,000 and you reach out to your loan servicer and you say, hey, I'm so sorry, I have been sick and I'm just now getting back to work. I know that I owe the $10,000, but the only thing I can do is make the next month payment on time, right? So that gives them an idea that you have the ability to start paying now. So maybe in that situation, they may say, we can take that $10,000 and put it at the back of your loan, right? Or it may be a situation where you say, I actually have $5,000 or I'm expecting a bonus for my job in the next couple of months and I can pay for next month. But then in a few more months, I'll be able to put down the full $5,000 to get me even more caught up. Those little details helps a loan servicer figure out the best option for you. 
So they're gonna to wanna to know how much money can you bring to the table in the very near future? 30, 60, 90 days, all right? So those are the general questions they wanna know about you. The next thing they got, they're gonna to wanna to know is the property condition, right? So what type of condition is the property in? Is the property still pristine? Does it need a lot of work? Is it dilapidated? Is the foundation messed up? Is there a big sinkhole in the front yard? They want to understand the asset. The next thing is occupancy status. Is it vacant or is it occupied? Are you living there? Are you renting it out? What's going on with the property? You have to remember the loan servicer is not driving by your house every day to see if you are there. They don't know about your house unless you tell them about your house. And so they want to understand all the details and the complete picture of the situation. If you are renting the property out, they want to know what you're renting it for. So is the property rented at a market rate? Is, or is the renter charging enough to be able to satisfy all the loan payments every month? Or are you not charging enough to meet the payments every month and you're having to bring money from your own uh, personal account in order to meet the payments, right? The last thing is that they want to know the insurance status. A lot of times when people are delinquent in one area, they start being delinquent on other areas. So they stop paying insurance or even if they don't stop paying it, the lender doesn't know who your insurance carrier is. So maybe you change insurance carriers, but they never updated the lender. And so the lender wants to know their insurance status because they want to make sure they're, they are protected in the event something happens to that property. So there are property specific questions that they will ask to make sure they get an understanding of the complete property status. After the property status, there are going to be some third party authorizations that the servicer is going to ask for in this loss mitigation package. And the third party authorizations could be, hey, I'm working with the realtor and this realtor is going to be calling into the servicer on my behalf. Or I'm working with my son or my daughter or an attorney. And so you have to give the servicer authorization in writing to be able to communicate with anyone else about your loan. So my name is DJ Lojo. I'm the only one on the mortgage for a property. My wife can't call in and say, hey, I want to talk to you about the property that DJ Lojo owns. They won't speak with her. Although she's my wife, although she knows everything about me, they won't speak with her unless I have given them written authorization. And so in that loss mitigation package, if there's anyone who you're working with on this situation, uh, an attorney, your family member, a real estate agent, whatever may be the case, they will want that authorization. So then in that same scenario, if my wife called in and she was authorized, they'll be able to divulge information to her that is, that is secret and proprietary just to my account, right? And so you have to fill out those authorizations. The other authorization you see sometimes in a loss mitigation package is the authorization for one lender to talk to another lender. So say, for example, you are current on your first mortgage, but you're delinquent on your second mortgage. The second mortgage servicer may ask you for third party authorization to talk to the first loan and first mortgage servicer. And the reason why they do this is because in the event of a default, they want to be able to call in and get specific information to protect their interests. And so you have third party authorization documents that may need to be filled out in loss mitigation packages. The next thing that you're going to have is a hardship explanation letter. And this letter is basically outlining exactly what happened. Why did you stop making the payments? What caused the event? Was it a death? Was it disease? Was it divorce? Was it your active service to our country? Was it the loss of a job? Was it a natural disaster? Was it COVID-19? Whatever it may be, they want to know. They want to understand exactly what happened because again, the loan servicer is trying to help you get to the point where you are paying again on time, right? And so a hardship letter could be as simple as, hey, I lost my job and it took me six months to find a new job. Now I have a new job and I'm, I'm ready to continue the payments. It could be as severe as a story I recently heard in talking with a, a borrower where they caught COVID-19 when the outbreak first happened. And then they were in the hospital for six months 
And then they had respiratory issues for another six months after that. So that's 12 months that they did not work. They weren't getting any disability and they just had no financial income. So they were depending on family and friends and things like that. And then after they recovered, they worked for about two to three months, but they had a respiratory infection that just got worse and worse and worse. And they end up having to have a life altering surgery on their lungs. And so now they're bedridden and they apply for disability, but still haven't received their disability. So it's been over two and a half years and this person has not worked. They had disability. They, they still have not received their disability. And they're in a situation where they are just dependent on friends and family to live. That's a life altering situation that that person never, ever expected to be in. The servicer wants to know that because at the end of the day, there are people on the other end of the line. And although they get tons of different stories and although their hands may be tied in certain scenarios, they're good people on the other end. And if they know your story, they can better help you. And sometimes better helping you is saying, hey, let me connect you with some folks in the disability um, services to help you get that faster. Let me connect you with an attorney to help you get that faster. Let me tell you about a program that may be able to help pay your mortgage for a few months. And so they may not be able to do anything with your loan modification or forbearance, but they can point you in the right direction to other resources that may be able to help you. So you want to make sure that when you're going through the loss mitigation package and you're filling out that hardship letter, that you are detailing all the specifics of your situation. They also want to understand the hardship letter, how you're going to be able to move forward. It's not good enough to say, I lost my job. Can you please give me a modification? That's not going to work because again, their job is to make sure you can pay on time moving forward. There has to be a resolution to that of I lost my job. Now I found a new job and now I can make double payments or now this new job I have is even better than my old job. I make more money. I'm more liquid. And in a few months, I'll be caught up on all my payments, right? They want to know the resolution. They want to know how to get to the next step. And you have to let them know how you plan to get to the next step. It's not the servicer's job to tell you how to get to the next step. You want to be proactive in providing that information and letting them know and showing them that you are able and willing to pay what is due. The next piece is your budget. A lot of times when you think about a budget, you may say, oh, I spend, you know, this much on that and that much on this. And there's no detail. It's not concrete. And so the loan servicer is going to ask you for a budget. They want to know how much you're spending on your mortgage, how much you're spending on your cars, how much you're spending on your utilities, how much is left for groceries and entertainment and things like that. Because at the end of the day, they want to make sure you can repay. And this is a big note to homeowners. If you complete a loss mitigation package and your loan servicer comes back and tells you that they can modify your loan, but the payment is more than you can afford, do not accept the modification. One of the worst things you can do is modify a loan into a payment plan that you can't afford and then get yourself back in the same scenario you are already in. That is a recipe for disaster. Because the next time you come and ask for a modification, the loan servicer won't be willing to give it to you. You've already had a chance. They don't want to give you multiple chances. They'll just foreclose. So if they offer you terms on a modification that you cannot afford, please, please, please do not accept it. Ask them for new terms. Present additional information. Ask for forbearance. Do something to allow yourself more time. And to make sure you get into a scenario that can work for you for the long term, right? So back to the budget. They want to know how much you're spending on your expenses and then how much you're bringing in every month, right? And then after the budget, they want to know your holistic financial picture, right? So they want to see your pay stubs. They're going to want copies of your bank statements to know how much you have in the bank. They want to see your most recent tax return, your 401k statements, a copy of any lease documents that may be uh, included if it's a rental property. They want to know everything. As I said at the beginning of the podcast, this is very similar to applying for a loan. They want to make sure you can repay. And so that is all the documents and all the steps in a loss mitigation package. 
So when you think about going through the process of filling out a loss mitigation package, it's very, very important that you set your expectations correctly. You want to block off some time to put these documents together, to write a compelling hardship letter, and to make sure that you are articulating how you plan to move forward. If you are someone who is not very technologically savvy, you can get these documents via the mail. They can mail them to you and then you can mail them back in. However, that does delay the process. And so you want to make sure that if you are not good with computers and you need some help, you get some help, whether it's from a son, a daughter, a friend. It's always easiest when you can upload these documents and send it over. If you need to, you can take the hard copy documents, go into a Office Depot or Kinko's um, or FedEx and have them scan them to an electronic copy for you. Whatever it is to help expedite the process is going to be beneficial to you. And a lot of times these modification documents and these loss mitigation documents have timelines on them. So they'll send the documents out and say, we need to receive these documents back in 14 days or in 30 days. And so in order to keep the process going, you need to get back all the documents to them within that time frame. Because if you don't get the documents back to them within that time frame, they may stop the loss mitigation process and continue the foreclosure process. And when I say stop the loss mitigation process, typically what happens is when you contact your loan servicer, and you ask them for loss mitigation options, they typically will halt whatever foreclosure process is going on. Again, the bank doesn't want your house. They want your money. Either you're going to pay or the house is going to pay. So keep that in mind. So they don't mind halting the foreclosure process if that means that they're going to come to a resolution with you to start paying on your loan. Typically, when you are filling out and completing a loss mitigation document, the foreclosure process is stopped. But if you miss a deadline with the loan modification process or with the loss mitigation process or with the forbearance process, then they will reactivate that foreclosure process. And there is no guarantee that they will allow you to restart the process. So please, please, please keep in mind those deadlines. They're very, very important. And you need to make sure that you are getting the documents back to your loan servicer in that timely manner. The other part that you have to remember is that they will also need time to review the documents once they receive it. So when you send the documents off, whether it be via mail or electronically, you want to make sure that you call your loan servicer and follow up to make sure they received it. If you send it via mail, you want to give them five to seven business days to get, get the package and then process it. And then you want to call and say, hey, I sent you the, my loss mitigation package. Did you receive it? Do you have everything you need? Are there any questions you have for me? Is there anything else I need to send in? The same thing, if you send it in electronically, you want to allow 48 hours or so for them to receive the information. And then you want to call and ask those same questions because you want to know that they got it and you want to be on record saying they received it. If you send it via email, you should hopefully get an email confirmation saying, receive, we are processing this document. And then typically most loan servicers have a timeline to process that document. Sometimes it's seven days. Sometimes it could be as long as 45 days, right? And so during that process, you want to check back in. So if you haven't heard anything on the seventh day, you want to be calling them on the seventh day. If the process is 45 days, you may want to call at the 20th day and then also at the 40th day. You want to stay on top of this process. The ball is in their court, but it's your job to make sure that you are putting on a full court press to make sure that they know you're there and that you're waiting for a favorable resolution, right? And the last piece that I want to share with you all as it pertains to the loan modification process is go into the process expectant. Expectant for good results. I know a lot of times when life is beating us up, we're just down on our luck and our expectations for the future are glim. And when you start filling out these documents and you're looking at your finances and maybe you have less money coming in than you have going out and you're scared and you're nervous and you're afraid, those are real emotions. And it is hard sometimes to overcome those emotions and push forward to what is next. 
But I want to encourage you that when you go through this process, you've done the hard step. You said, hey, I need help and I want to do something about it. And so as you fill out the documents and as you are writing your hardship letter and going through all those things, be expectant and be optimistic about what is to come. And so you want to be realistic in your expectations around your finances and around your ability to replay. But you want to know that the loan servicer is there to work with you and that they are there to help you get to a better financial resolution. All right. So with that being said, the loss mitigation process is relatively simple, but it is very similar to applying for a new loan. At the end of the day, the goal is to get you to a better situation, to get you a more favorable payment or give you a forbearance to allow you time or to move old debt to the back of your mortgage that gives you all the different options um, available. In an episode that's coming up, we'll talk all about modifications and the different type of modifications that exist. Um, it's going to be a great episode, so definitely make sure you all stay tuned to hear about some of the most interesting and, and cool modifications that some of my partners in the industry have seen. With that being said, I want to go to my favorite part of the podcast, which is the bow tie round, right? And in the bow tie round is where our guests get to tie one on with the host of the day, which is me. And so today's bow tie round, the B stands for your best advice for someone in foreclosure. The O stands for one thing you are grateful for. And the W stands for your wildest or most interesting foreclosure related story. All right. With that being said, the best advice for someone in foreclosure is to make sure that when you are completing a loan modification document, that you set aside time to be able to complete it. This will take you some time. It may take a few hours. And for some people who move really slow, it may take a couple of days. So make sure you set aside that time and do what you need to do in order to get the results that you want, right? One thing I'm grateful for today, I am grateful for this wonderful foreclosure fix community. As I said at the beginning of the podcast, our community is growing and it is growing fast. And that's because you all are sharing the message of hope for those who may be facing foreclosure. And so I am grateful for everyone who's liked who subscribed, who's text, who's emailed, who called, who's done all those great things, not only to publicize the show, but to also let us know how we're doing. And so for everybody who's sending in questions and for those who are commenting, I really appreciate you. And I'm so, so grateful. As it pertains to my most interesting or wildest foreclosure related story this week, this story is not a story that's concluded yet but I want to give you kind of a real time update of what's going on in, in my world as an asset manager. And so right now I am working with a couple who has been delinquent on their mortgage for numerous years. One of the issues that they're having is they're both on fixed income and they don't have any additional money to be able to pay the mortgage. And so they have two mortgages on the property. The first mortgage, which they're paying currently, and then the second mortgage. The second mortgage is the one that's delinquent. And so as a result, they are trying to figure out a solution in order to rectify that situation. And right now, they've been sent the loss mitigation package, and they're in the process of filling out the loss mitigation package. However, the big issue is that they don't have enough income, nor do they have enough assets. And so this is a real hard situation for a loan servicer because there's really no path or no way forward. And so I am working with them to try to figure out if we can do something creative, like a reverse mortgage where they can tap into the equity of their house and then also be able to satisfy the mortgages that are outstanding on the property. And so this is still in the early stages. But I just want to give you a teaser because we're going to be talking about reverse mortgages as a potential solution. And we're going to be talking about how this story resolves in the future. But that being said, keep in mind that there are always creative ways to get a mortgage foreclosure situation resolved. You just have to be willing to think outside the box. And in the scenario of this couple, they're both elderly. And so a reverse mortgage may just be the solution for them. And so I don't know how it's going to end yet, but that is a story that is in process and we will keep you posted on how everything goes. Folks, this wraps up another episode of the Foreclosure Fix podcast. If you like the information you're receiving, please do us a favor. Go check us out on YouTube and just share the information with someone who you know can benefit. 
I really appreciate you for listening in. I am your host, and I will see you later for Project Six Family. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. The views and opinions on this podcast are for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice. If you have a specific legal question, we highly recommend you contact a qualified legal professional.